The Frankendoodle is back with a micro Swiss all metal hot end, knocked to a fan, and finally, its first prints. I've got the amazing problem where I have a constant stream of 3D printers coming my way for review and modification. This means, however, that it's been some time since I worked on my personal project, the Frankendoodle. This takes a Zortrax M200, which in my opinion has mostly beautiful mechanical parts, but is greatly let down by proprietary electronics and most of all, software. Previously, I fitted a Rumba RepRap board with some aftermarket stepper motors, and then I made a custom PCB to interface the cable that goes from the top to the bottom of the printer. Now previously I said I was going to put on a BL Touch, but as you'll see in this video, a number of things didn't quite go to plan. Previously I had modelled up this set end stop holder in on shape, and that's because it didn't come with anything like this from factory. From factory it has metal plates on the bed, and the nozzle comes around and touches those. I found them to be quite unreliable, because naturally plastic oozes, and it ruins the connection. The bed is gone as well, instead I have a spring steel sheet from my Prusa Mark III. The new system works perfectly, it's adjustable, and the wiring was easy because I hijacked the black and white wires that you see here. I prepared the simplest of test prints, a humble cube. And how did it go? Well, not so good. Poor quality and then a jam on two separate occasions. Now yes, the electronics have been changed here, but remember that I had three of these printers at my school for three years and we constantly suffered from blockages and jams. Therefore, I was looking to throw money at the problem to try and improve the situation. On Google, I found one upgrade. It wasn't cheap, but I decided it had to be for me. It was a micro Swiss all metal hot end with a special block needed for the Zortrax M200 to replace the entire assembly. Everything in the box seemed like it was quality, it was all wrapped up nicely, everything was shiny and new and nicely machined, I was ready to fit the parts to the printer. Comparing the old and new parts, we can see that the new ones are nice and clean and shiny. The heat brakes are also quite similar, but the old one extends inside the old nozzle and the new one, the nozzle butts up against it. Micro Swiss have a really easy to follow video, so I found this a breeze to install. It only took about 20 minutes before I had everything changed, heated up and extruding again, which was a huge relief. Because the standard heater block, heater cartridge and thermistor wires are all retained, it means that this is a very quick installation and let me tell you, it was very satisfying to see it extruding cleanly again. So why would you fit an all metal hot end? Well, most of the time, 3D printers come with a PTFE liner that goes all the way down to the hot end, and that limits the temperature. The Ender 3, for instance, can do 255 according to their website. If you need to print a filament that needs much higher temperature than that, you're simply not going to be able to do it unless you upgrade to an all-metal hot end. Therefore, if your factory hot end is working great and you're not planning to print with any high temperature filaments, then it's probably not going to be any improvement for you. One thing worth noting is that the nozzle comes with a protective coating, so it should be pretty good at doing abrasive filaments such as glow in the dark or wood filament or anything like that. Next up, I thought it was time I finally calibrated the steps per millimeter for each axis properly. Now previously I've covered how to do the E-steps in a couple of different videos, and it's simply a matter of marking out a length of filament with marker on the filament before it goes in, running through that same length, and then comparing and adjusting for the difference in the values. For the Z, I propped up a ruler vertically against the Z axis, and then I lowered it by a set amount, and then compared the starting and end values, once again adjusting the Z steps per millimeter to get it spot on. Now if you're trying to make big changes on the rotary knob, it takes forever to do very little. So my tip is to create your own G-code script in a text editor with M92 to set the steps per millimeter for each axis and then M500 to save to the EEPROM. Simply run this from the SD card as if you were starting any other print. It was time to print that test cube again and it started really well. I was quite optimistic, but then part way through, it stopped extruding. As I went to start disassembling the extruder to clear the blockage, I noticed it was hot, too hot to touch in fact, and I thought that was a little bit strange. As you would probably expect, the filament was very soft and stretchy, and when I took off the front cover, it was quite amazing the failure that had occurred. I've never had this type of failure before. Around this time it was getting late, I was tired and I accidentally chipped a blade off the cooling fan. Fortunately, it was already noisy, so I had previously ordered a Noctua fan to put in its place. 
Now usually printers that run on 24 volts need a matching 24 volt fan and therefore a 12 volt Noctua will not be compatible. One nice thing about the Rumba RepRap board that I have fitted here is I can change the jumper between 12 and 24 volts and therefore it becomes compatible and this becomes plug and play. Now back to that hot extruder. I flipped the printer upside down and checked the VREF on the stepper motor drivers and I saw on the extruder it was way too high. I also took note of the zebra stripe artifacts on the surface and I thought it was a good idea to change all of my stepper motor drivers back to A4988s. However, this introduced a number of problems controlling the X and Y steppers, probably because they're double resolution and it just wasn't compatible in some way. There was a lot of layer jumping and shifting and I just couldn't get it to print reliably at all. I then switched back the stepper motor drivers for only X and Y back to the DRV8825s and everything seemed to be fixed. Never have I been so relieved to print off something so simple. Now this is a pretty clean print, despite the fact that I haven't played with the slicing profile at all. However, there is room for improvement. There's still some surface artifacts, and I think while I'm throwing money at this thing, I might as well go for the best and get some TMC stepper drivers like on my Prusa Mark III. Let's see if we can get this thing really quiet and reliable and printing really cleanly. You can look out for that in the next part of this series at some stage in the future. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching and happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.